When I was like this at 230 pounds and I dieted myself down to about 200 pounds, how did I do that? Did I just keep my calories the same the entire time? No, there are adjustments that are needed to be made to ensure that you're continually in a caloric deficit, but also doing it in a manner that ensures that you are losing body fat, but not losing muscle along the way. We're starting right now. This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. And if you hear my voice sound a little funny, well, I just got back from the Arnold Classic. I got another video on my studio page. So guys, I do have a secondary page where we post all of our podcasts, the Pro Physique Code. I also post content around my clients, around competitions. So I'm gonna put that channel here. It would make me feel good if you enjoy my content here, if you went and subscribed to that channel. I realize it's a little more specific, so don't feel bad if it's not your cup of tea. But I wanna share with you guys a lot of the details of my coaching and my business and all of the things that I share. Today's question comes from our Facebook group for our 90 day transformation challenge. Now, while the challenge has already started and underway, if you want to jump in just for the meal plans, for the training plans, uh, and for the group that we do live videos and all the coaches for pro physique answering questions in there of support, it is only 50 bucks. You can still do that. The purpose of me answering this question is I want to help the people in the group understand what we're doing. So today's question is a really good one because we all understand that to see some fat loss, we got to make an adjustment to our life. Sometimes though, that next adjustment is the difficult one. So here's the question. Once we start losing a significant amount of weight to 10 to 20 pounds body fat percentage, do we need to readjust our macros and the macro calculator again, or just continue to adjust them as we progress? For example, I started at 230 and 30% body fat. Once I get down to 210 and say 20% body fat, should I use the calculator again? And what would my new macros be? My only concern is trying to get down to 200 or 190 pounds is that plateau and the already low calories, thanks in advance. So first things first, they mentioned the ProPhysique calculator. That is a calculator I set up for free. You just go there and plug in a bunch of information. I'll show it to you here, ProPhysiqueMacros.com. The idea right now for anyone in our challenge, we are providing meal plans and we are providing these, uh, these things, but when you start a nutrition plan, and hopefully if your goal is to lose body fat, you start in a manner where you're creating a caloric deficit. However, our bodies adapt. And part of that adaptation is guess what? Less body fat. So whenever I hear someone say that their metabolism is slower, that's not a worry for me. Our metabolism doesn't change. Our requirements for our life change, okay? You know who has a really, really great metabolism? An obese person. You know who might have a bad metabolism? Someone who's shredded. And what does that mean? That means our bodies are very efficient. We don't require a lot of calories to operate. We are efficient if we have low body fat and lots of muscle. We are inefficient if we are very high in body fat and have very low muscle. So don't necessarily think of the term metabolism as something that's bad. And if you see ads for metabolism killers, well, please shut that off because that's nonsense, okay? The only thing we can do to kill our metabolism is put on a bunch of body fat and sit around and do nothing all day. Metabolism is just simply the process of burning calories that our body undergoes. So when someone tells me that they're concerned about their calories and how to adjust them, I think that's a very smart concern because as a coach, that's my job. It's to make sure that my athletes are able to lose body fat. My clients are able to lose body fat and not only just lose body fat, but to keep it off. So how would we go about this? Let's just say you're on a 2000 calorie diet and your next adjustment is going to be down to 1750 calories. Well, when do we make that adjustment? When we stall. How do we know we stalled? It has to come from the scale, pictures, and measurements. Why? Because body fat is not represented by a scale, okay? That is just one thing that is represented. It is not representing water, muscle, and many other things. And so sometimes the scale will actually go up even though we've lost body fat. How does that happen? Well, quite simply, recomposition. If you start treating yourself better, if you start eating more protein, if you start eating more fiber, if you start doing some type of resistance training or exercise program, our muscles in our body are going to respond. They adapt. The adaptation that a muscle makes is generally to get bigger and more dense. Okay. Even if you're an endurance athlete, there will be an ad adaptation period. So what else is going to happen during this time? Well, even if you're losing body fat and you're recomping at the same time, the scale might throw you off, but there is no waist muscle. So if that waist is coming in, if your shirts are fitting looser, if your pants are fitting looser, that is a clear indication that you are in fact losing body fat. And this is where pictures can be very helpful because guys, you've seen me lose body fat over the years. The real value in fat loss is that we are seeing the visual progress right in front of us. Those pictures are huge. 
And I've said it many times before, but before I started taking pictures of my back, I didn't realize just how much fat I was losing because fat comes off in a predetermined method based on how much body fat you have in your genetics, but it doesn't always come off in a place you can see it. For me, it, a lot of it came off on my back. And when I started taking pictures, it made me truly realize the value of that process. So how do we ensure that we don't hit a plateau and we don't run into a brick wall? This is where refeeds or short periods of increasing calories can really have value. There's two approaches. Typically, I'll take a one or a two day approach and call that a refeed, or I'll take an entire week, call that a diet break. Now, these two approaches are used at different times based on the need of the athlete, how long we have. But the research is very clear that the longer you spend losing body fat, meaning you take a little bit longer to get there, but you take these intermittent periods of recovery, the more likely you are to not only keep the body fat off, but you'll lose more body fat over time. And so this is a very powerful tool. When we talk about the failure of fat loss diets, well, perhaps it's the fact that we only diet for fat loss for weeks and months at a time. If we stop and take these intermittent periods of maintenance where we drop the cardio, drop the activity, bring the calories up, we see some magical things. And guys, I've been coaching bodybuilders for over a decade now, and this is probably the most impactful thing that I've done as a coach is give my competitors who are getting down to six, seven, five percent body fat these breaks. Not only do they have more success on stage, I've got clients on the Olympia stage, they also have more success post show. They feel better, they recover better, they maintain a body composition they're happier with, they don't have food eating disorder behaviors. It would be a real failure to go through a fat loss phase, lose 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds, and then put it back on. That's not success. So taking the time to push yourself for fat loss, and then when you hit a plateau every now and then, taking some recovery is very important. But through the process, while you're just getting started, if the momentum's good, just drop those calories. Now, the thing I didn't really address here was you talked about calories. You didn't talk about activity. I think there's real magic in movement. We tend to focus on the diet because it's us ingesting energy, but our movement throughout the day, even sleeping, burns calories. So how can we ensure that we're in a caloric deficit? Increasing our daily activity. Uh, I, I famously have made some walking videos that have millions of views because I have a treadmill right there and I've seen major changes just from adding walking, not from doing anything else. And so I kind of have this idea that I would like everybody to start doing more activity, more walking, finding ways to fit it in their life. I think there's just a magical benefit to being accountable to your calories, being accountable to your daily routine. And then you can toggle these switches based on the needs, but don't fear fat loss. You're not there yet. There's going to be adjustments along the way. I would make weekly adjustments if you're not seeing changes, either visual measurement or picture or the scale until you reach a place that you can be excited about. And then if you get fatigued, you can take some recovery. I would wait probably a while before I introduce refeeds and diet breaks, basically until the momentum stops. But guys, hopefully this helps you on your journey. Caloric deficits does not need to be a word that we should fear. It's just a temporary phase until we reach our fat loss goals. Once you get your body fat off, calories can come up, cardio can come down, and you can maintain it. I say it all the time. Fat loss is a challenge. Keeping fat off is not nearly as challenging. All right, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow.